Well, students, this lesson relates to concealed carry. And this is pretty much following the script in the handbook. Now, here I am. It's a pleasant fall or spring day. I'm wearing a golf shirt, carrying my briefcase, mind my own business, walking around, just the innocent uh, businessman, professional, salesman, whatever. So, what are my concealed carry options? Well, actually, if I'm carrying a briefcase, I've got some pretty good options. Because I can put a darn big gun in there. And if one's not enough, I can have more than one. So, uh, briefcase, pretty discreet. Doesn't take you too long to get the gun out. Helps if you know how it's orientated. But uh, pretty effective way to carry your concealed weapon. Who's going to look in your briefcase? Unless you're going somewhere you shouldn't be going, like a courthouse or somewhere that has security where concealed carry is not allowed. So, is that it? Two big guns? No, actually, I've got my air weight and appendix carry and an inside the waistband holster. So, three guns. Pretty well concealed. Now we move on to a couple of other options. Now in this example, here I am walking along, minding my own business. But actually, I've got a 1911 and an outside the waistband holster. Well, what you say, that actually is open carry. Yes, it is. And North Carolina is an open carry state. And you can carry like this in various parts of the state. There are places like Durham that have uh, bylaws against it. And there are places like Chapel Hill where they will cry, go in arm to the terror of the public if they ever see a gun. So, I don't recommend going open carry. You have declared your hand, you have let everybody know you were carrying a firearm. Now sometimes that's appropriate, like when I was working in the gun shop and I wanted the criminals to know, in case they had any doubt, that uh, they would meet armed resistance. And uh, funny thing is when you do that, it tends not to happen, but there you go. So what has this got to do with concealed carry? Well, an open carry outside the waistband holster is actually pretty comfortable, it's pretty functional. When you pull on a jacket, now it's concealed carry. So, how do you get to it? Well, I'm going to give you a pro tip on that, and the pro tip is this. When I was in the police, our guys who were doing personal protection, close protection, they were actually they were known as the close protection team, you always kept something a little bit heavy in the pocket of your coat. So that if you needed to draw, you threw the coat aside and that got the coat out of the way of the holster and then you got to draw and you're ready to go. So, you can go from concealed to ready for business just by having your car keys or something else in the pocket. A little bit of practice doesn't take long. So, outside the waistband is concealed, but only if you're wearing a coat. So here I am on my coat again, uh, but this time I do not have a gun there. This time I've gone for something different. I've got it in a shoulder holster. Now shoulder holsters were very popular back in the 80s, popular with law enforcement. The advantage of a shoulder holster is that if you are sitting in a car, Wearing a seatbelt, 
Mr. Normal, you can still draw your weapon very readily, whereas a gun that's on your hip can tend to be trapped by the seatbelt. And if you're wearing a jacket over, if you're wearing a seatbelt over the jacket, it can make the gun kind of hard to get to. So, shoulder holsters, again, they're, they're only concealed if you're wearing a jacket to cover them up or a waistcoat or something like that. But the advantage of carrying a gun that way is you can carry quite a substantial gun and it's still concealed. Whereas when we go to the warmer weather clothing, it's a bit harder to hide a big gun and therefore a small gun is the direction you're probably going to have to go. So here I am, I'm wearing uh, warm weather, most of the year North Carolina type clothing, golf shirt over uh, khakis. Now, this time I've opted for the inside the waistband on the right hip with a fairly small gun option. The, the trouble with that option to my mind is uh, it tends to print. If someone's paying attention, if someone's looking, they'll probably spot it. Now the casual observer won't. The casual observer, the person that sees you walking around Walmart, probably not going to notice unless they're really looking at you. This is where actually I think appendix carry has some advantages. Appendix carry, where you have the gun tucked in the front, it's not polite to stare at a man's junk. It's not polite to stare at somebody's belly. So people tend not to do that. But staring at your back uh, is not such a big deal. So if you've got a gun like this and it's on your hip, you just got to write up your shirt, get a grip on it and get it out. And it's pretty convenient. You know, you can go through a range of motion. You can stand up, sit down. It's not going to fall out. But well, again, it depends on how discreet you want to be and it depends on various options. Now another option is an inside the pocket holster. Now you can actually get holsters which will hold your gun orientated in your pocket and it squares off the profile so it looks a little bit less like a gun. So all you've got to do is slip your hand into your pocket and bring out your gun and you're ready to go. Now, Revolver is probably not ideal for that. Uh, Semi-auto 380 probably lends itself a little better. For the ladies, uh, the revolver is great in a pocketbook, especially if you get a concealed carry pocketbook with a little zip in it. Then you can be really, really discreet. Other options are fanny packs. I'm not a huge fan of fanny packs because when I see somebody wearing a fanny pack, I sort of assume they've got a gun in there. But maybe not everybody else does, and for older people who would still wear them, younger people just won't wear fanny packs, it's just not something they would do, it's like, well, I don't know. But older people who choose to wear a fanny pack, that's a pretty good place to hide a gun, and you can keep it on good, good control, and just, you'll have to unzip to get out the gun, but sure, that's alright, you know, if nobody knows you have it, you've still got the element of surprise. So, for the ladies, pocketbook's good. Appendix carry you can probably get away with. On your hip is more likely to stand out a bit. And another option, which I'm not mad keen on, because it tends to induce a limp. That's why you get the Johnny Comes Marching Home. And that's the ankle holster. With an ankle holster, you have two options to get to the gun. You either need to take a knee, drop down, which I think you could be slick, you could drop to the knee and say, please Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to do. And then you can pop up with a gun in your hand. The other option is you've got to stamp one leg while you do the draw. And that leaves you unbalanced, which I don't think is uh, very satisfactory. But ankle holsters are an option. Typically people use them for very small guns, like a 32. A, a, a 380 is nearly too big 
for an echo holster gun, ideally you'd be looking at uh, a 32 Caltech or maybe a new American Arms uh, Team Tiny Revolver, which also works pretty good in your pocket, either of those choices. So it's personal preference, if you're going to carry concealed, you should carry concealed all the time and you should do it the same way so you don't get confused and you should practice with the gun that you're likely to be carrying. So, is there any concealed options we haven't covered? We've done outside the waistband, inside the waistband, appendix carry on the hip. Cross draw is simply where you have it on the opposing hip. And then when you go to draw, it's coming that way. Now that would still be the same orientation as if it was on that hip. So if you're right-handed, it's going to work for you. The same right-handed holster would work that way. People who are left-handed, you're going to have a harder time getting holsters. They just don't make as many of them. But they're out there. You might have to go to the internet to find them. So, what have we not covered? You have the ankle, the waistband. Ah yes, there's one more. And it's one that I have and I quite like, if you want to be really discreet. And that's the uh, right inside the waistband. There's a holster that you can get from the NRA and it's like, it's like a sparring. It's got a Velcro strap and you put it underneath your trousers. So the gun is actually sitting uh, in, a, in a, a lower appendix position, if you like, more or less where your junk is. And you could be wearing light shorts or regular trousers or jeans. Again, it's rude to stare at some of these junk, so even if the gun's printing a little bit, people are going to wonder if it's a gun or if you're just glad to see it. So that holster uh, costs a little bit more. You probably have to go to the NRA to get it, but it is very discreet. And say you wanted to go to a movie theater or some other place where they frown on concealed carry guns, that's a pretty good holster for that kind of scenario. There's just one more option that I want to show you and uh, that's when wearing shorts. Come on up next. So here I am, uh, Mr. Everyman in North Carolina. I'm wearing my uh, my shorts, I've got a bit of skin exposed, my pasty Irish flesh, trying to get a bit of sun. And uh, this is sort of an everyday look for people in North Carolina, pretty much all year round. I used to wear a lot of coffee coloured t-shirts when I was working as a private investigator. Because it meant when I spilled coffee on them, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't look yucky. And uh, the whole thing in surveillance is you wanted to be the grey man. You just didn't want to stand out from the crowd. And this would be an outfit in North Carolina to not stand out from the crowd. So, I'm not standing out from the crowd. There's nothing around my waist. There's nothing around my ankles, which are exposed. Uh, might be something in my pockets, but there's nothing obvious. So how am I doing concealed carry like this? Well, this is probably my favourite, and it's uh, Ruger LCP and a wallet holster. Now the wallet holster squares off the profile of the gun, so it sits in this orientation in the pocket. It's in there in a pocket with Velcro. Mind its own business, to all the world it looks like a wallet or a mobile phone. And if the situation arises and I think, uh-oh, I need to get involved in this, a little bit of Velcro, get my fingers in the position, I can bring it right out, ready to go. So, one of my preferred options, uh, people will go for your personal preferences, see what works for you, but there are plenty of options, plenty of ways to do it. And uh, any questions, we'll take them now at the end of this video. Postscript. 
There's something that uh, I didn't actually cover in the last lesson, which was mentioned when I went to check the book, and that's carrying your concealed handgun in your vehicle. Now, I'm kind of fortunate. I drive a Toyota Camry. The center console is just the perfect size to accommodate a Glock 17. So all I gotta do is touch the face here, it pops up, I can put my hand in, and I got the gun in my strong hand ready to go with no difficulties, very easy access. Now, if your car doesn't have such a convenient access point, you've got some other options. The glove box uh, is very typical, a lot of people would keep guns there. Trouble is, it's a bit of a stretch, so you've got to reach quite a bit over to get at it. Uh, you could put it in a holster under your seat, fastened with Velcro, which is talked about in the book. And that's okay, you know, that if you can get a rig that works for you. You could have it in the side pocket of the door, but personally I think getting a grip there would be a little tricky. So it may be just simpler if you have the gun on your person in a place where you can access it. And that's going to depend on your vehicle, it's going to depend on your personal preferences, it's going to depend on various things. So that's one we can talk about in the class. A lot of people also talk about having a truck gun. Just one that can sit down the back of your seat or something for an emergency. If you're going to carry a gun in your truck, I would say why limit yourself to a handgun? You could take it to the next level. You could have a, a carbine or a, a rifle caliber pistol or, or, or some other more devastating weapon if you've got room to put it there or even a pump action shotgun or a pistol grip shotgun. If you anticipate that you're going to need some firepower and you're in a vehicle, why stop at a 380, you know? Why not get something a bit bigger? At least a high capacity 9mm. So that's just a few thoughts on uh, guns and cars. The, the legal aspect you have to remember is when you're a concealed carry holder, you may lawfully have the gun where you can access it inside the vehicle. That's a privilege that's not given to people who don't have a concealed carry. Uh, people who are open carrying and have it sitting out in the open where a police officer can see it, that potentially is not a great situation. What I tend to tell people is if you don't have a concealed carry, the best place for the gun is in the truck. If your main concern is being stopped by law enforcement, and if your main concern is you're going to need a gun while you're driving, it's time you did the concealed carry course. That's my views on that. And hopefully, any loose ends or other things. I also noticed reading the material uh, that raises a few points about safety issues with uh, putting a gun in a pocketbook or luggage or whatever, and we can talk about those in the classroom situation. So hopefully this is the end of the video and uh, we'll go from there.